Hello everyone, welcome to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be presenting you a static cardiology rhythm and scenario, and on the bottom of the screen you'll see a 1 minute and 30 second timer. This timer is here because it closely mimics the actual average time you should be spending on each card during a national registry scenario. At the end of the card, I'll give you an explanation and a treatment for the rhythm that you saw. Good luck. Three, two, one. So this static cardiology card's a little trickier because there's a 12 lead. Now this is a different kind of 12 lead than you may be used to seeing. This is um, a hospital or an institutional 12 lead because usually in a hospital setting, we like to have a single lead displayed across the bottom in its entirety so we can better recognize the rhythm instead of having to recognize the rhythm using consecutive lead boxes which can have a different axis and appear different across each lead so we make it easier on ourselves and have that exploded single view all across the entire length of the 12 lead so let's first go ahead and examine the rhythm now in this scenario i've actually given you the heart rate already for this patient but i want to show you a quick trick to get a heart rate using a 12 lead ecg because remember these are not six second strips this is actually 10 seconds so with our six second strips we would simply take the number and multiply it by 10. most of um, everybody's base six math isn't as strong as their base 10 math so i'll show you a really quick trick to break this up into a six second strip first thing we have to remember is that each one of these lead lead segments represents two and a half seconds of time. So what we'll do is we'll take two of these. So that's two and a half seconds. That's two and a half seconds. And then we'll simply add another second here. And the way we do this is we take five large boxes after that second grouping of leads. Because remember, each one of those large boxes represents 0.2 seconds or 20 milliseconds, which is a fifth of a second. So at this point here, we have a six second strip. Now all we need to do is count the QRS complexes and we can get our rate. So I count 10. I would then calculate this with a six second strip value. So 10 times 10 is 100 beats per minute. The given heart rate in the scenario was 104. So this is very, very close. Because the heart rate is 104, and this is an adult patient, this is a tachycardic rhythm. Let's go ahead and examine the rhythm a little bit more closely to see what exactly we're dealing with. So I'm looking at a rhythm with a P wave, a QRS complex, which is narrow, and the R to R intervals appear very consistent, so it's nice and regular. And the P to R interval is less than 0.2, so I would call this sinus tach. Now, if this were a regular six second strip on a static cardiology card, that rhythm interpretation would be fine. But because we're looking at a 12 lead, we need to examine each lead grouping here uh, and determine if there's something more significant going on. So the way I do this is I prefer to examine the anterior septal leads or the septal anterior leads first, uh, V's one through V4. Uh, these are precordial leads. And the reason I choose these four first is because they correspond to the LED. 
or the left anterior descending coronary artery, or the Widowmaker vessel. So I look at these first. And the way I teach this is I say, you almost treat it like an internet listicle, V1 through V4, the top four reasons that your patient's going to die today. Because again, this involves the Widowmaker. So let's take a look at those first. Now V5 and V6 are lateral leads, so we'll just go ahead and lock those out here for a second. So what I'm looking for here is ST segment elevation. Now what that means is the ST segment is actually the part of the, at the J point here. The J point should start on the isoelectric line, which I've already drawn out here. The isoelectric line is that invisible continuous line across the electrical baseline. It simply represents a state of time or state of, or a period of time where the cardiac cells are neither repolarizing nor depolarizing. So your ST segment should start at this isoelectric line. ST segment elevation is defined as one millimeter of ST segment elevation over the isoelectric line in your limb leads and two millimeters of ST segment elevation above your isoelectric line in your precordial leads. A way to measure that quickly without calipers is to take the tiny little individual squares that make up each one of these large boxes. Each one of those represents one millimeter. So judging by what I'm seeing here in the anterior leads, I'm not seeing any ST segment elevation in any of these anterior or septal leads. Now, if you look up here in V4, you'll notice maybe there's some elevation there in that area, but this is likely due to patient motion. If you'll notice the entire isoelectric line kind of curves upward and downward as if the patient were breathing. So that is not a reliable indicator of, of uh, ST segment elevation. That's simply patient motion. And you cannot call an ST segment elevation MI in one lead. You have to have two contiguous leads showing ST segment elevation. Let's move on to our other leads. The next lead grouping that I like to look at are the leads in the inferior portion. And I do this because they're clumped together. It's just very easy to skip to that next. Your inferior leads our leads 2, 3, and ABF. Right away, it's very obvious that lead 3, you have a significant amount of ST segment elevation above the isoelectric line, as well as ABF. Still elevated, but not as significant, is lead 2. So I have more than enough here to call this ST segment elevation in the inferior leads. Even though I have ST segment elevation here and I'm prepared to diagnose this patient, I should also examine the lateral leads as well. Your lateral leads are 1, ABL, V5, and V6. You'll notice there's some ST depression in leads 1 and ABL, but there is no ST segment elevation found anywhere here. My diagnosis of this patient then would be sinus tact with an inferior MI. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario and devise a treatment plan. So my patient is 37 years old, complaining of chest pain, which he describes as a severe pressure. The patient appears cool and diaphoretic, but mucous membranes are pink and moist, and the lung sounds are clear and equal bilaterally. Vital signs are as follows, blood pressure 164 over 84, heart rate of 104, respirations are 20, SpO2 is 97% on room air, and the blood sugar is 147. Of note, the patient also has a history of hypertension and high cholesterol, which are both untreated, which gives this patient significant risk factors, and then he is also a smoker. Treatment of this patient will go as follows. Of course, you're going to recite the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. The next thing I'm going to do is consider a right-sided 12-lead ECG. And I say this because 50% of your inferior MIs are right-sided. This is important because right-sided MIs are preload dependent, and if you give a nitrate, which is known to reduce preload, you'll actually make the patient's condition much worse. Now, this is not likely to be a right-sided MI because right-sided MIs are generally bradycardic. This patient, if you remember, is tachycardic, but it should still be noted for a static cardiology card. I'm then going to proceed with typical ACS protocol or Mona protocol or Phona protocol, depending on what drugs you use. I'm going to give aspirin 324 uh, PO, nitroglycerin 0.4 milligrams sublingual, Q5 minutes, so every five minutes with a maximum dose of three. I could consider giving morphine two to four milligrams or fentanyl 50 micrograms IV push. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, 
hang some fluids at a to keep open or to keep vein open rate, and then transport the patient to a PCI capable facility, aka one that has a cath lab. And that's very important to mention for the static cardiology card. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make your own playlists with other static cardiology videos that I've made for you here. You can shuffle them up and create little decks of your own. Till I see you next, have a good rest of your night.